All right, welcome to my March 21st live item shop review video. So before we get to the actual item shop, we need to talk about what's going on tomorrow. So yesterday we had a downloadable update to prepare us for tomorrow, which is Wednesday, March 22nd. And if you're out of the loop, the Creative 2.0 drops tomorrow, AKA the UEFN. And that stands for the Unreal Editor in Fortnite. So apparently a lot of content creators, in particular creative creators, got access to this UEFN super early. And a lot of them have been designing some of the old maps, such as Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and possibly even Chapter 3. Now, I don't think anyone actually knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to log in and then all these creators that got early access, their maps are going to be available right away. I don't know if that's how it's going to work. But if so, we could be looking at tons of creative experiences involving the Chapter 1 map. So in addition, they're also changing how the supported creator code works. Just for creative, though. So in this image right here, it says Creator Economy 2.0. And the data miner Sheena tweeted this out. He said, Epic Games will soon introduce Creator Economy 2.0 to Fortnite Creative, which means creators are no longer dependent on the support of creator device. Instead, creators will be paid based on player engagement in their own maps. So right now, as it stands in Creative, obviously you have to go into a map, approach the support of creator code device, and then enter whoever made the map's code. And that's how they get support. But apparently in Creative 2.0, when they release this part, map creators are going to be paid based on engagement so that's going to be huge imagine not to toot my own horn but just imagine if someone approached me and said hey can you advertise my map maybe play it do a video on it recommend it to people and let's say my video gets i don't know 50,000 to 100,000 views everyone watching that is going to go potentially play this map and that creator that made the map is going to make bank so i can see big YouTubers being huge promotional tools for this. So keep that in mind. If you make a cool map and you want to approach me, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to do that. However, this also sparked a much bigger debate. So Top 5 Gaming, the amazing YouTuber, tweeted this out. He says, Fortnite Creative 2.0 drops tomorrow. Creators need to get paid based on session time. And creators should be able to charge to play maps. Hopefully these things are addressed and supporter creator code spam buttons can be a thing of the past. Now that was never confirmed by the way about this paid thing, but he sparked a lot of backlash from that tweet because a lot of people were saying uh, Fortnite is free to play and there's no way you should be able to charge for these creative maps. So just for an example, let's say the best creative team out there makes a OG map of chapter one. It's flawless, a perfect replica of chapter one from the loot pool down to every precise tree. Now let's also say they charge 99 cents to play. You buy it for 99 cents, you can play it as much as you want. Would a lot of people not play it? Probably. Would a lot of people still pay that 99 cents to play it? Probably. But of course, if you make something terrible and you charge 99 cents, it'll probably never have a full lobby because nobody will pay that. Now don't get too mad yet because like I said, we don't know that that's actually coming, but people are comparing this to a sandbox game like Roblox where you can literally build your own map and then have people pay you to play it. But again, that was never confirmed. He's just speculating at this point, but you should see some of the comments. They're mean and they don't want ever to see a paid service like that in Fortnite. But the potential for things like that in this UEFN are unlimited. And you know, some of these creators out there are just so, so good at what they do. I've already seen teasers from this UEFN with the OG maps and the sweet game modes, and it just looks unreal. Literally, the name of the title, Unreal Engine, that's what it looks like. It's all unreal. It's crazy. But what is going to happen tomorrow? I honestly have no idea. Like I said, I don't know how they're going to implement this. I don't know what it's going to look like on day one. But just trust me, this will likely change Fortnite forever. So now with that out of the way, I was going to do a separate video on that, but I didn't have time. I've had a lot of issues on my farm lately, but I'll do a separate video about that. So stay tuned. Let's get to the item shop now. I did see one birthday shout out from Jay. He says he's turning 53 today and he always watches my videos. He lives in the UK, so I guess his birthday is technically the 22nd, which for him would be today. So happy 53rd birthday, Jay. Hopefully you have a wonderful day. 
Then I saw one from one of my followers on Twitter named Logan. Said he's turning 15 today. Happy 15th birthday, Logan. All right, let's see what we got in the item shop. Looks like Cypher PK's locker is back. Boy, his Icon Series stuff comes back more than anybody, doesn't it? Not complaining, though, because his is one of the best in the game. But if you missed out on it, here's another chance to get it. So he's got a lot of different styles with reactivity, awesome animation, and you can toggle his mask on and off if you prefer. His back bling recently got a all purple full reactive style, which is amazing. Otherwise it's red. His scimitar pickaxe also has reactivity off or fully engaged. And of course his emote, the cypher strut is traversal as well as not copyrighted, which is amazing. His brand new glider, which just recently came out, also has a secondary purple style. And boy, is it loud. I can't hear. And then the animated wrap, which was once a free item by watching his Twitch stream, is now in the bundle as well and sold separately if you want to purchase it. What else we got? The Immortal Sands bundles back. That Sandstorm, Scimitar, Chrono, and the Emblem. A really great bundle. Basically, I call this Jasmine and Aladdin. Pretty sweet. Chrono is one of the best contrails in the game, by the way. Big Chungus, aka Big Chungus is back, and Rectorian the Brave. I love the medieval knight right there. Big Chungus is huge, as his name implies. He's got a big slurp barrel on his back. The double tap is one of the biggest pickaxes in the game, also expensive at 1200. Slurp wrap is a little underwhelming, considering how ginormous and awesome everything else is, and then you've got that just bleh wrap. Raptorian the Brave, like I said, phenomenal. He's got a lot of medieval weapons on his back bling as well. Love the gold chainmail, beautiful. Then he's got the Oathmaker's Axe, which is just okay. Nothing really special about it. You know what is special though? This bundle right here, the Dreamy Days bundle. Wow. The Nighty Night pickaxe has been gone for 933 days. Beautiful pickaxe. Little star guy from Mario Galaxy in the middle there. The Night Flight Glider, again, 933 days. Really cool, makes a unique sound effect. The Dreamy Wrap is 933 days as well. Nicely animated. It's got a gold and deep dark blue. Now, the Slumber Skin has been back recently, so he's not super rare. It's just all his accessories. It's basically the star from Mario Galaxy as the head and a creepy body. Fastball Slugger, Home Run, and Grand Slam are all back. I love these skins. These are the unofficial Major League Baseball skins, but they're still pretty sweet. Got spring training going on right now, and the MLB will start up shortly. Can't wait for another Chicago Cubs year of baseball. Slugger is the male version. He's kind of cool. He's got a home plate on his back. Not his back bling, though. This is his back bling, which covers up the home plate. Home Run makes a cool jingle. Seventh inning stretch. Pretty cool. Grand Slammer is basically a trophy embedded on an orange baseball bat. Skalaxis is back. He's a sneaky Slytherin type villain guy. So he was kind of rare, but he's came back recently. However, his pickaxe, the Bone Fangs, have been gone for 683 days. Nothing really special here, but if you want the full combo, worth a grab. I always wanted his back bling to be that cool bone sword right there, but they opted for dual wielded instead. Neon Venom's back as well. One of the most bizarre colors in the game. It's like a nasty vomit green color. Jungle Scout is back. She's a souped up OG default skin. I like that. She's got some war paint on her neck and arms. Moisty Merman has some of the coolest styles in the game. Check this out. Default color is that puke green. So that would actually go great with this wrap, I think. Maybe a little off color, but it's close. Secondary style is blue and orange. Very cool. This one's my favorite. The dark orange plus black. I love that. Halloween vibes right there. And we got the purple and red. Too bad this skin is kind of goofy because like I said, these color schemes are phenomenal. And the back bling is just okay. Only one color scheme there. The Duelist's Grace, this used to be 100% free. Everyone got it for something. I can't remember what. Now it's 800 V-Bucks, come on. The Whirlwind, not too shabby. Chapter one, season seven. Okay, full tilt, one of the fastest traversal emotes in the game. Fast as fast can be, you'll never catch me. Paddle Royale is back from Sonic the Hedgehog. Closest thing we'll ever get so far to that video game franchise, or I guess it's a movie franchise now, right? Ooh, the Premier Kickoff Bundle is back. These skins are the brand new soccer skins and they're super customizable. So you really only need one male or one female, but there's just so many options. You can pick a predetermined color scheme based on a country's flag, the 
or you can create your own. You can change the patterns of the vest, you can put a scarf on, you can change the hair, the tint, and the metallic sheen if you want. But there's so many colors to choose from and you can literally customize from head to toe, even the cleats. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. Well worth at least one purchase of a male or female. A lot of people didn't like the gear that's associated with them, but I thought it was pretty clean. Trophy is not that customizable. You can change the colors, but the gold obviously lingers. Likewise, the pickaxe is the same. You can change a little bit of the colors, but the gold is always there. The emote is cool because it actually represents whatever your scarf looks like on your character. So if you customize one, it'll be like that here. And then the Raccoon City Survivors Bundle is still here. That's Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield from Resident Evil. What an amazing item shop. Lots of rare stuff, some returning good stuff. By the way, after this item shop, I will be doing a full gameplay review on this brand new starter pack, Miss Tegan. Stay tuned for that. It's worth a watch if you're on the fence on whether or not you want to get it. So there you go. That's all there is to it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. A like is always appreciated. And don't forget to use my supporter creator code, which is Tabor Time.